Hey everyone, it is Anna Runyon from Classy Career Girl. Welcome and thanks for joining us today. I'm excited to introduce you to Carrie Leader. She is the operations manager at World Teacher Aid. And today, World Teacher Aid has constructed eight complete schools with a total of 40 classrooms, providing daily education to over 3,000 students, which is incredible. And hopefully we can dive into that more. Uh, but at the point of this is I really just wanted to talk to her about her career transition and what she's doing now, where she came from. It's just, a, it's an incredibly inspiring story and I think you guys are gonna be very motivated about it. Um, so I'm gonna talk, we're gonna learn more about what her career is like today and also, you know, how she made that career transition. And this is all part of our month long interviews of women who've made transition into careers that they love. So I hope you find it inspiring. If you're feeling a little stuck in your career, we're all about getting you unstuck. So let's get started. Thank you so much for being here, Carrie. Thanks, Anna, for the invite. And I'm so happy to, to help you out with this interview process. And it's exciting to share my story and how I transitioned as well um, to the career that I have my dream job. So yes, awesome. thank you. And we share kind of a similar mission, too, because it sounds like you're all about empowering people as well. Absolutely. It's definitely, I feel like I've been given that gift of encouragement and um, I just love helping people get to the potential that they can be. And even if I'm in the background helping out, I feel like that is something that I've been gifted with, the talents and the gifts that um, I've been designed to do on this world. So yeah, I'm really inspired by you as well and the work that you're doing. Um, and I'm learning so much more uh, about the, the classy career girl community and it's fantastic, so. Awesome, well we've loved, we've just had the business class to build the classroom in Kenya and we have, yeah. It's been so inspiring to see all the women get behind the mission of, of supporting yeah. World Teacher Aid and learning more about about what you do too. So like, let's just let's start there. Like, tell sure. us about you know what you do at World Teacher Aid. What is yeah. a day in your life like? Like, I always tell people to do informational interviews. So <laughs> I'm going to yeah. do an informational interview question. Like, what is what is it like you know to work at World Teacher Aid? So yeah, I've been with World Teacher Aid for about a year and a half now. I am their operations manager. Um, full-time, I've been with them for about a year. July 1st, I, I celebrated my one-year anniversary full-time with them. I started out part-time, um, and one thing led to another, and we decided to make that transition um, to um, full-time. So I am their operations manager, and I, so I um, am their only full-time employee here in North America. So you can imagine with Amy and I, we get a lot done, um, but my day kind of looks different every day, which I kind of love um, waking up, kind of having some routines daily, but um, I really get to work on projects um, for the charity um, to really fulfill the, the goals of what World Teacher Aid wants to do. So a day in my life looks like uh, working on emails and responding back, setting up times for Amy schedule. Um, so a lot of admin work in the background. Um, but as also, I always get to help um, uh, relations with our donors. So building those relationships, um, making sure that our key influencers are um, able to communicate our goals as well as um, how they can help uh, continue to support our, our effort. And so I also get to travel quite a bit, which is a huge love of mine and passion. Um, I'm so fortunate that I get to travel um, because it opens up your worldview so much more than um, just being stuck here in North America. So I help fundraise with that. So we travel to different events, um, whether it's a PLF, which is Jeff Walker or Russell Brunson's, or um, we're going to Ryan Levesque's event this year as well. Um, there's a few tribe live, how we met um, and so we I travel with that and I'm the one that gets to be the face of the charity in the background so you'll see me at the table um, interacting with people processing forms for donations um, but that's one of my favorite parts is the interaction with people and getting to share our story with people um, that want to know more and how they can help with the charity um, yeah, and then I get to help with our donor trip that you're coming on. We're so excited. I'm so excited for you to be coming with us. Um, in October, we're taking about 80 people, which is 
crazy, but um, we're excited. Um, so I get to help plan Amy with that trip. Um, travel is also, I'm sure she mentioned in her interview how much she loves to travel. Um, we both love it. So it's like traveling, planning trips, uh, adventures is something that we both enjoy doing. And making it special for our donors is, um, I feel like we're really good at and making sure the small little details down to the well, what if the t what is the t-shirt's going to look like or special little gifts or making sure we have enough tints um, and making sure people are comfortable. Um, so yeah, this is a little bit what I do. Um, I really, my, I feel gift as well, like we shared is like support. And I feel like if I can help Amy do uh, this uh, role as an operations manager, I will do whatever I can for her and um, try to make her, life a little easier if it's something I could take off her plate like I will so because she volunteers her time and I get paid to do it so and it's something I love it's actually a really dream job um, that I get to work from home get to travel get to help leave a huge impact on this world and help other people leave an impact and so I people are like what do you do and I try to explain and I just say it's a dream job so uh, that's a little bit about what I do um, on a daily basis like I said it changes every day something different every day it sounds like but then you also get to like help and impact yeah. and, and and watch what have, see what you're doing is making a bigger impact too and yeah that's an awesome job to have I love that you say you're on your dream job too <laughs> yeah at 34 I didn't think I was going to be able to say that but because I don't think a lot of 30 year olds 20 year olds can say that they have their dream job and I'm so fortunate to say that I do have a dream job and it was just something that was not even an awe on the horizon and I wasn't looking for it. I was really happy where I was and um, it just led one thing led to another and it fell into my lap. So, yeah, so, um, more about that. so what were you doing before world teacher aid and how did you make that transition? Yeah. So I was in higher education for nine years. Um, and what does that look like? I lived on a college campus for 12, um, four as an undergrad and then nine as, or eight as a professional. And so um, I oversaw a residence hall. It's not a glamorous job, it's fun, but it's really hard. So uh, during the school year, I was on basically 24 seven uh, on call if there's emergencies. I, um, I like to coin that job as an educator of life. So you're teaching people, uh, young adults, how to live on their own. And sometimes that's really hard. Um, so it's not just, sometimes you're a mom, sometimes you're a doctor, sometimes you're a counselor, sometimes you're crisis management. Um, it was also one of those jobs that you never knew what you're going to wake up to every day. Um, but it was so rewarding because I was um, able to mentor a lot of future leisure future leaders and especially the women because um, it was a residence hall of women. And so I was very fortunate to have a team that I led every year of at least 12 to 15 student leaders. And um, that was my favorite part was seeing them be the leaders, the women that they were designed to be and to help them get to that point. Um, loved it. It was just very taxing. And I went, I was on staff at my alma mater in Lakeland, Florida for about seven and a half years and then I made a transition to go to a different school in Raleigh North Carolina and um, I was just looking for another little part-time job really honestly never knew that the charity would be it and my best friends um, were contacts of student Amy and they had reached out to her and said hey like do you know anyone she's like actually my best friend um, it would be perfect and so a interview that I thought would have lasted 20 minutes was an hour and a half. And I think we both kind of felt like this was the right move for us. And within a few weeks, I knew that it was going to be something long-term and working for them because they're, you don't know what it means to do. They're pretty incredible people. And so I um, enjoyed living or living my passions through helping them th through their passions. And so um, by July 1st, I was full time. So I made that decision, um, with my faith and making sure that like it aligned with my goals in my life and my values, leaders that I truly, um, inspired by, but also respect, um, were really important to me. And I feel like Amy and Stu were those, those people. And so I really thought higher education was going to be the career I was going to be in. Um, for a long time, I wanted to work myself up to a director's level, maybe VP one day. And um, there was something else for me, like, and this was it. And so the door opened 
And it was scary because all I knew was nine years of higher education. And I felt like for me, it was part of my faith that like, I, for me, I'm spiritual. So like I prayed about it and like, that was for me. Like I know that I had a sense of direction of like, this is where you need to go. And I haven't looked back and it's scary. It was scary. It was really scary because I was going to move like to a different part of the country that I didn't, did not grow up in um, to be closer to my family. If I made this decision, I was completely changing careers. Um, has nothing to do with my education, like my master's, my undergrad. Um, but it was the best decision I made for my career. And I'm so glad I did it. And so I just looked at what would be the best decision for me. Like, how would I be able to leave a better impact? And that's what I love about Amy and Stu is that they really want to leave a big impact. And that was why I was so inspired to work for them because I want to leave an impact. Even if I'm behind the scenes, I'm still leaving a huge impact. So yeah, so that's a little bit where I was before the charity and how I made that transition to working for World Teach Aid. So. so a couple of things I noticed too, is that you focused on like, what was the best path for you? I'm sure yep. they did not want you to leave. I'm sure they were like, no, <laughs> you're incredible. Don't leave us. Yeah. But, I remember the day I walked into my boss's office and I like closed the door and she's like, oh no. <laughs> I'd only been, yeah. I'd only been there for a year. And she's like, I was like, I need to talk to you. And she's like, oh no. Oh. And I was like, She's like, is this good about it? I said, well, it's good for me. I don't know about you. And so I mean, it was a good conversation. And she, she encouraged me too. She's like, if that's where you're passionate about, don't live in where you're not passionate about. And so I was so inspired by her leadership to give me the okay to leave. And so, yeah. And also sound, so you did use networking then. You, had, you, you're, you asked your friend if they knew anyone in, not in like the, the career you wanted, right? Well, actually, it was Stu and Amy that reached out to my friend, and so they um, they were looking for someone to help part time with a charity. And so, but yeah, I mean, she had always said, "Do you want an extra job?" Like, I can probably find. She's really good at like finding people their niches and the right people. So I always knew that, but there was never anything that I was like, "Oh my god, I need that! I need that position." When we had talked about different things, so she's really. Uh, well known and the people come to her all the time saying, I need a, I need an assistant. Like who, who can you pull? So definitely networking is huge. Um, if that was not, if it wasn't there, I wouldn't be with world teacher aid today. So. And then I also like that you, you did research on the company or that not the company, the organization you were going to and, yeah. the and made sure that they matched your values and your beliefs yeah. and the impact that you wanted to make. And so I think yeah. that something we we forget too like do you when you are changing careers do you do a ton of research on the leader you know Absolutely. The, so that research is so important to make sure it lines up with your values yeah. otherwise you'll get into you might get into a situation where it's like that doesn't match up with what what you value and the decisions absolutely. you make so I love that you spent the time doing that yeah, absolutely. I had a previous boss. He he said there was three C's of how he would hire. It would be character, competency, and um, just oh, I forgot the last C. But those two things are huge for me. Like your character, your competency, and chemistry. That's what it was. And that night, I knew I had the chemistry with Amy and Stu after my. I knew that they had competency. Like they knew what they were doing. But I had to research the character to make sure that that was in alignment with my goals and my values. And so when I knew those three C's were in alignment, I was like, for sure, let's go for it and dive right in. So yeah, I think it's important to research because I don't, you, you have to be happy where you're at. And if you're making your career transition, you don't want to work for someone that doesn't have high character or integrity. And it's for me, that's an important value. Yeah. So we have a lot of women who want to make a bigger impact in their careers and they're just feeling stuck maybe doing a job that's not having the impact that that they want to have like what would be your advice to someone who wants to make a career change and have that bigger impact and ideally traveling as well yeah for sure i for me it was um again some of that was alignment with my values um and if I, the advice i would give someone that wanted to make that transition was is it the right timing in your life? For me, it was the right timing because I was getting burned out. I could sense my, just my physical burnt out, my mental, my spiritual burnt out. For me, I think that's where I had to check um, when I made that decision to transition. Um, where am I? Is this something that I could really honestly see myself? And 
Um, in my 20s, I probably would have said yes. But as I have gotten older and a little bit wiser, um, I realized that like, I don't know. And if I didn't take the chance to say, I don't know, I would have been stuck, I think, and probably been really unhappy in the last few years. Um, and so that's, that would be huge. I think just evaluate where you're at, evaluate where is this aligning with your values? Does it align with, with where you're at in the season of your life? Um, is it something that is going to, um, allow you to further yourself, um, and to allow you to further your impact? And so I think if you're researching of how to, to leave a better impact, start locally, like just start somewhere, whether it's your church, whether it's a boys and girls club or some small organization, like you don't have to make a huge career change to leave an impact. Um, you can just look just in your home. Like how can you impact your city first or how can you impact your home? Um, for me, that was huge. And I volunteer at my church. I make sure that it's something that's, that's important for me because if I can do it overseas, I, why can't I do it in my city and help them leave an impact? Um, so I think that's where you just smart, start small. Um, I, and then take the big leap, like take the big leap of faith of like, okay, maybe you should start your own nonprofit. I've been inspired by Amy to really think about that. Like there are some things that I believe that I'm really good at. And one of them is like empowering young women to be great leaders. And I have been really thinking and praying, like, how do I do that? Like, is it a nonprofit that I start in the next few years or is it a membership site or is it something that I can give back. And I, and I would want to give back. I want to be able to, to fully give something back. Um, and I've been very fortunate to have some incredible leaders that I'm sitting under to, to help make those decisions, help make those formulate thoughts and creative minds to, to really do that. I think creativity is important. I'm a person that likes to get everything on paper. Um, to be able to visualize it. So visual boards, I see your background, like the quotes, like, I'm with you too, girl. Like I have that all in my office, like that's important for me. And um, to know that like, those are things that I want to get to. Um, and so I think just evaluating yourself, um, evaluating where you can leave an impact right now, and then take a big leap of faith. And I think those are really good uh, things to do if you think you're in transition. So love that there's so many places locally that need support and need help and all yeah. like if you just reach out to one of them and offer to volunteer just any an hour even like it's just yeah they'll still get up I know that that's what I was doing when I started too yeah like, trying to use your using your strengths to help other people no matter what it absolutely. is absolutely so what did you do I, I when you said you had that interview with Amy um Obviously, it was a success. It was like it sure. worked really well, um, and she, it worked. You got hired right away, and it was just like meant to be. But like, how did were you nervous? And like, how do you feel like you? What did you do, do during that interview that you felt like led to that success? Well, I was definitely nervous, um, but maybe it's just Amy Sue. They don't make you nervous after the first few minutes. So, um, I definitely wanted to be prepared. So I, that's why I researched Amy and Sue a little bit, researched the charity that I understood their mission, like I understood their values. Um, and I didn't want to go in looking like I didn't know them, like I wasn't prepared. So definitely prepare. Like that's huge in my opinion is prepare, um, for any interview and practice with a friend. Like I literally, I don't, I don't think I've ever told them this, but I like practice with my friend, like questions. What do we think they're going to ask? You know, making sure that I had my thoughts together and what I, how I could help them and making sure that I could give them my strengths or even some of my growth areas that I still need to continue to work on. Um, I think it's okay to talk about that. I think it's okay to tell them that you're not perfect because I'm not perfect at all. Um, and I think sometimes you shine through that. I think you shine through some of your growth areas. Um, and I think that also gives your leader that you're, you're real and that you're not going to just say one thing to get the job. And so I definitely was very nervous at the beginning. Um, within like five, 10 minutes, I was like, oh, this is fine. I feel like they're friends um, and all that. But I think, I think that also has to do with just my confidence in who I am. Like, it's taken me a long time to get to that place of saying that I'm a confident woman and I have taken a lot of years to get to there. And, 
um, a lot of pages in my journal uh, reflect that. And so if they always say like, make it till you fake it, I don't really like that. But like, sometimes you do have to make it to you, like fake it till you make it. And so I was just, wasn't determined to, to fake things. And so I put my head held high, like I make sure I dressed good, like I felt good, like physically I felt good, spiritually I felt good, mentally. Um, And I think all those things aligned. And as soon as I realized that they're just people, like Amy Sue are just people, like yes, they're very successful in what they do, but realizing they're just people, like, and you can still shine with just people and just being who your personality. Like I let my quirky self and make fun of myself through the interview and make them laugh. Like just being confident in who you are and who you're designed to be is really important to me. I think in an interview process Um, and making sure that you're comfortable physically, emotionally, spiritually, like holistically prior to that is really important. That just takes time for me. It was writing in my journal for me, it was praying for me. It was spending some time by myself and just making sure I was centered, um, before that interview practicing, like I said, with my friend with questions and, um, then actually talking to them again and debriefing of how the interview went was really important for me. So it just wasn't about the interview. It was actually the deep, the debriefing as well with people that I know that understand being an entrepreneur, being in nonprofits, what does that mean? How does it, how do you leave an impact? And so gather some friends around you, gather a mentor, like mentorship is really important to me as well. And so I talked to them, like I said, this, was that wrong? You know? And so I, those are just my little thoughts. So. No, I love that. I think it, it's, it's, it's important to remember, I think when I know when I was interviewing and I was stuck, I would like go from my day job and I would just rush to the interview. And I wasn't exactly all you, all the things you were saying. I like yeah. myself cause I was stressed and I was, you know, rushing to get there. And so I think how you said it was like the ideal. It's not how I did it. I rem- I'm remembering like that one time where I was like so stressed to get to the interview, yeah. but like you put yourself in the right situation for you. So you can make sure you presented yourself the best possible way that you could and so making sure that you you had done all those things was really helpful for the interview yeah for sure love that awesome so I would love to end by asking you to share some of your favorite like memories of your trips to Kenya and the impact that we haven't really talked about we talked about how we all want careers with impact but like tell us some of like those moments that I'm sure are like have been etched in your brain, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's so many. And I was like trying to think of what, what stories I wanted to share with you. Um, so I'll try to narrow it down to a few. Um, so I've been to Kenya twice with the charity. Um, one last year with our, it was my first dinner trip. So I was kind of just observing how a trip runs. And then Amy and I went back in May this year just to um, connect with our schools that are being built and where we're going to bring our donors this year and making sure all of our contacts were in line. So I have a story for each of them. Um, so I'll start with the one back in May. Um, we, we have an employee, his name is Sam. He's our full-time field rep and he does a phenomenal job with our community. And I don't know if necessarily I knew exactly how committed like he was to these communities because they're in totally different two time zones you know, it takes a long time to communicate sometimes with each other, but we were driving in the van and we did a lot of driving because it takes just a long time to get to these communities because they are in the middle of nowhere. Um, but it's beautiful in the middle of the nowhere, nowhere. But, um, he kept saying like, we're getting so much done. Like, and Kenyan time and North American time are a little bit different. And so it's, we're, I think our brains are like, program. we got to go every day. Like, we have a schedule, whereas Kenyan, you just take your own time. But he kept saying, like, man, we're getting so much done, and it's only day two. And I'm like, well, that's why we came to work. You know, we came to to make sure that we're we're this trip is going to be successful for our donors and for the people that are attending. And I just looked around, and I'm like, wait, we are getting a lot done. And I just had this like sense of peace in my heart that like it just reflected to me is that we are doing a lot. It's not about this trip, but like what Amy and Stu have been able to establish and the people like with me being brought on the team with Sam being brought on the team, we have a counselor now, like we are doing so much and with so little, like 
to say that there's only one full-time employee and how much impact we're going. And I was just a, a sense of like oddness, I guess, of just, um, I, it brings tears to my eyes because I'm like, okay, again, this just reminds me of, this is my dream job. Like I literally said, I wanted to travel the world. I wanted to leave an impact. I wanted to see this world that was created and we're doing it and we're leaving a huge impact. And then we're doing it really at a high rate with a little bit of people. And I think it's scary at sometimes when people want to, to leave an impact because they feel like they have to have this huge team. And I was just reminded that sometimes things start out really small, but yet they are really big in the end. And I was, it just was one of those all moments. I was like, oh, this is what it's really about. Like, it's not about what we're, exactly what we're doing. It's about how little we are and how big this world is and how we're leaving that impact. And so a lot of people were like, what about the kids? What about the schools? Like, isn't that your favorite part? It is. But I think those moments in our life when we realize how little we are and how big this world is, was just something that I needed to have personally, um, just for making like an alignment with my career decision and making sure again, cause you're reflecting. Cause it was almost a year. I was like, okay, am I doing the right thing in my life? Like, am I doing the right job? Cause I don't want to do something that I'm not supposed to be doing. And I was just reminded in that trip that was like, this is where you're supposed to be. Like, even though sometimes it can be stressful, some days are not always peaches and cream. Sometimes it is hard. You have to make hard decisions. But I, I literally sat and just, I don't think anyone saw me. I was like tears in my eyes. And I was just like, okay, this is it. Like, this is it. And so I was just encouraged. And I've been able to share that story um, with a few of my students that I still mentor. And they, it's just encouraging to see how that light has had on their impact and their like decisions of what they're making and cause they're studying to be doctors and teachers. And I was just so encouraged by that and that trip. And so that was probably my favorite moment. Um, besides getting to know like Sam more because I've only met him one per time in person, but, um, and Irene, we did a crazy adventure in India together. So we got to see her a little bit more, but I just, I love those moments. And I think those moments in the, uh, and the track or the van are some of my favorite because conversations happen that I don't think I've ever would have been able to have. And cause I can't speak Swahili. So I'm not going to have those conversations with the kids, but I can have those conversations with our team or with the donors in the future. And so that's probably one of my favorite stories from this past trip. Um, and then in August, um, I have a picture on my background on my computer and it's of me like doing a little selfie with a bunch of kids. And, um, it's at a community that we were scouting and I, um, my heart was a little heartbroken that day because they weren't ready for us to build. Um, cause we don't go into a community, um, unless they're established they're the government has to plot out their land and there has to be leadership. And we just want to make sure that they're going to be successful. So, um, my heart broke that day cause I knew that they weren't going to probably be able to for another year or so until we're able to, to really build. And, but I keep that picture on me because I get to see these beautiful smiles of these little African children um, that are something that I will always be etched in my mind. Like there are certain images from this, that first trip that I will never forget. And these little kids are full. They have no idea. Like this is all they know. Like I live in a really comfortable home. I have food in my fridge, water that runs, heat and like, like AC whenever I need it. Um, I have internet at my, my fingertips and yet these kids are full of life and they're living in a barn with nothing. Like who knows if they're going to have food the next day. And it makes me really grateful for where I am and to know that those smiles I'll get to see again and the brightness that are in behind those eyes are not disminished. Like they're not um, jaded by what society has told them to be. And it has inspired me to be even be more confident and with my goals and my career and um, to know that their stories, I may never get to see the fruit of it until later on in life. And it may never. And I'm okay with that. And um, I may never know what happens to the little boy that made this car literally out of wire. And I have a picture that I always keep, I, I look back as well. Um, that's why we love our photographers that come on our trip because it's images, because that's how you're going to remember. And he, 
he made this car literally out of nothing of just wires. And it reminded me that I'll, I'll probably never see that little boy again ever in my life, but there's still an impact that I can give back and know that it's a lifelong, we were giving a lifelong impact. And I am just, I literally at times will just sit back and pinch myself because I, I can't believe the life that I live. Like seriously, like this is amazing that I have been chosen to help leave an impact with, with Amy, with Amy and stuff. I love seeing those kids like they they make me so happy and that's why I keep those pictures up it's because it inspires me to do my job it inspires me to to donate a classroom like I will donate a few within I want to within the next five years to donate some so I'm making goals and it's helped it helps me to be inspired to to live a huge impact on this on this world even if I'm in the background and I think sometimes people feel like they have to be out in the front but you can't, sometimes you have to be in the background and I'm really okay being in the background and not getting uh, the notary sometimes, which is fine. I'm totally fine with that. And to see those kids smile and to give them a hug is worth it all. So those are some of my favorite moments. I love that. You can really, love that. You can really tell the students are shining through. Yeah. Shining motivated by. Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. I can't, oh gosh, I can't, I can't wait to go. <laughs> I can't wait for you to experience like I literally it's it's such a life-changing trip it really is and I think as entrepreneurs they become more inspired to to see how they can leave an impact not just maybe in Africa or maybe in their city like I said it's just not all about Africa it could be actually about your own home your own city and you're going to experience something incredible and it might be a little hard at times because you're like what can I do and I I sometimes just tell our donors, like, all you can do sometime is just give. You can give. You can start fundraising. You can figure out how you can leave an impact um, in your own city or leave a bigger impact in the community that we visit. Like, there's so many options. So you're going to have a blast. And you get to have fun with all these other people and networking, and it's going to be amazing. So, And you learn so much from yourself, too, when you go to yep. campus or you – we just did the fundraiser and you just yeah. you really just learn so much when you're not focusing on the money you need to make internally yeah. in your business. It just like my ideas and like creativity just like skyrocketed. I couldn't yeah. even believe like what I was able to do with everyone else to like partner yeah. with, with other people in my community and my audience. And like, it could never have created what we created just alone too. So it's like, it brings out the best of you, yeah. of what you can produce with everything that you're all the gifts and the strength that you have and then partnering with other people too. That's why I love like what you're doing too, because you're getting so many people with all these different strengths and bringing them together to help. For sure. you. Yeah. So, yeah. It's great. So inspiring. Awesome. awesome. Well, thank you for sharing your stories. I also love the, how it like the first story led into the second story too, of like how yeah. you wanted to do so much more. Like we all want to do so much more. Yeah today like exactly. a long-term thing and like you know hopefully someday in your life that school will be built in that yeah. location and those kids will go to school there and it's just such yeah. a, a motivating inspiring story to look not just today and tomorrow but to look long term like having that vision long term yeah. absolutely well thank you so much I appreciate it. it's been an honor to speak to your community and um, it's, I can't wait to share it. India with, or India, Kenya with you. Um, and it's, <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, but thank you. Where can people learn more about you and World Teacher Aid? Yeah. So World Teacher Aid is www.worldteacheraid.org. Um, I do have my own social media handle. So it's at Carrie Leader. If you want to know more about me, um, on Instagram is probably your best or on Facebook. Um, but yeah, we have a Facebook group, um, or Facebook page for world teacher aid. You can just search world teacher aid, follow us. Um, we we do our updates there. We share, our, we also have Instagram. It's world teacher aid. Um, and so we would love for you to be a part of our community, um, and to know more about us. Um, we update it re pretty regularly, um, with pictures and just stories in our newsletter as well. Um, so you can find us at world teacher aid at pretty much Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. So, and we are in the midst of a fundraiser too. So if you, um, if you're interested in donating to this 
classroom that we're building in Kenya, you can go to www.classycareergirl.com forward slash Kenya classroom to see the details for that. Um, but I'm excited. We're going to, we're going to be sharing a lot on social media. I'm, I, apparently the internet works while we're over there. So I'm excited yes. to kind of document this journey yes. and to write. We were just talking about writing more and, and documenting it too. So you guys can see um, what, what the, what the dollars are going to as well. So thank you so yes. much, Carrie, for being Thanks, here. Anna. Okay, we'll see you later. All right, talk to you soon. Bye.